Hey guys, it's Friday. It's Joyce. Medusa was framed and uh, more musing. I've already had my coffee. I actually have to go get a new phone today. My uh, on off switch on my phone doesn't work. Um, and I have to jerry rig ways to turn it on. So I have to go get a new phone. But um, before I do that, uh, I wanted to. Um, do this thing that is pulsing through me. So as some of you know, yesterday, I did a simultaneous remote view with my buddy Andrew Zabrun III. We both targeted on Lake Mead and Hoover Dam for a variety of reasons. We did our remote views at the same time. And then we did a recording of discussing what we saw in our views and um, did some readings on what we saw and uh it was pretty heavy it was pretty dark and deep as you know uh, when you remote view you don't know what you're going to find and part of why uh, a lot of people don't remote view is that you have no choice as to what you're going to see you're going to see what's there and and your ability to translate what you see is sometimes really pushed to the limit not only emotionally but um, you know, your cognitive dissonance gets in the way and you see things that your mind doesn't have parameters to process. And so sometimes you interpret what you see wrong because there are uh, protections against trauma in our psyche, right? And so we might see something really horrible. I mean, I remote viewed into dumbs, and all of that stuff and i've seen uh, i've seen stuff i can't describe um but it doesn't scare me it just makes me more stoic and able to perceive clearly it helps me learn to perceive clearly um but you know it, it it's very difficult process it's a very painful process actually kind of when you do reiki at certain levels you you absorb um, the pain and the restriction that is in a person. It comes through you, it moves through you because you're being an antenna and you feel pain, you get sick, I start to sweat, I get nauseous, but that's the process and it has to be done. And um, you know, they need, they need that intermediary for that frequency release. They can't heal unless it happens. So, People that do this work, we're not special. You could do all the work that I do. You could do all the work that Andrew and I do and everybody else. Nobody's special. Nobody that speaks light language is special. Nobody that does Reiki or remote viewing or any kind of energetic frequency work is special. You have the same power. You just haven't developed it yet or you've developed it in different ways. So I just wanna say we're not special because we do this. We're just using a different language you might not have so I just want to say that. Um, but anyway, so my butt was really kicked yesterday. I worked on three post-surgical clients and then I did an animal Reiki session. So that was where I was when I came to do the remote view and then the reading with Andrew. And, and that was just a completion of my day in every way. I had to, I literally uh, converted the video on Zoom and set it all up on YouTube and literally fell into bed with my clothes on because I was exhausted, just cried. But what happens when you remote view is those images stay with you and they form in your unconscious into other things, other places to look, other questions to ask. So I woke up this morning after all that um, with a little clear view of not necessarily Lake Mead or Hoover Dam, but uh, of what's really going on from a far view out. And um, it has come to me, I have mentioned this before and other people have talked about it as well, is a lot of times where these dams are built, especially if they're built on ancient systems that were already there uh, in one way or another. Um, what's really there are accesses to uh, primary water the water that comes from deep within the earth, um, the water that 
is known, uh, not the Fountain of Youth, like I live across the street from the amusement park, not the amusement park, but the attraction that's called the Fountain of Youth here in St. Augustine. That's not the Fountain of Youth, it's just artisanal water. There is deep water that is the Fountain of Youth, water that is so pure and so high in oxygen and minerals that it can cure anything. That's primary water, living water, truly holy water. And there are places where it comes out of the earth. Usually it comes out of what we call blue holes or cenotes. Um, but, you know, that's, uh, that's like the rivers to Agartha, the, the river that comes, that springs from Hyperborea. That is the river of primary water. The water that comes out of the bottom of the Idrisil, the tree of life, that's the primary water, different names for it. And just like, Star forts uh, were ancient technology using access to this water built by our ancestors that some people call the Tartarians, the Waukesha Moors, whatever you want. You know, it doesn't matter what you call it. Um, built by uh, civilizations that were uh, of a higher elevated frequency who understood technologies and used them to benefit all. Uh, these, these were overtaken by uh, people who understood the technologies as a certain, they understood the technology well enough to manipulate it, to use it to their own personal gain instead of it being for um, uni uh, universal gain. Uh, so I think some of these massive dams, Hoover Dam is an example, but there are dams in Tennessee and the dams of my childhood. I grew up in Northern California and we had dams all over. I, I swam in those dams and boated on those dams as a child. Um, but they're dry like the Hoover Dam is too. And so um, one of the things that I said, and we talked about this last night, um, I don't think it's climate change. I, climate change is bull crap anyway. Um, but these dams, I believe, are places of uh, primary water come to the surface. And that, oh, just in like star forts have powerful deep wells of artisanal water underneath them. That was all part of the technology of a star fort. That's the premise behind Wardenclyffe Tower too. Um, where these dams were built were sources of aquiferic primary water water that literally can heal anything, anything on the earth, on the planet. They were tapped, but then they were programmed with um, geomancy branding and uh, cymatic patterning that created very discordant uh, frequencies so that the ether from that water that is coming deep within the earth in a place where it's like a sonote, it's for all, but it's trapped and contained and there's a, a fence built around it of concrete. And within that concrete, there would be uh, copper coils and and I've, I've, there are copper coils underneath the Georgia Guidestones along with sacred geometry. And though the, the Georgia Guidestones came down, I'm just saying that if that those coils and sacred geometry, that geomancy, if that isn't removed, then those that built the guidestones with discordant harmonies are still broadcasting their discordant harmonies. Because it's that branding in the earth, that cymatic patterning in the earth that was actually doing all the magic. The stones were just uh, transmitters, antennas. It was it was the actual branding that was done to the silicate of the land itself that created the, the spin. And one of the things that Andrew and I saw when we did our remote view last night was all of the uh, <clears throat> ritualistic uh, activities that went into the building of the Hoover Dam and what's in the concrete of the Hoover Dam. I believe, and you know, we could talk about the Tennessee Valley Authority all day and how 
that's really an example of what we're talking about here. But anyway, I believe, and I'm not the only one, you know, I'm not the only crazy person saying this. These bodies of water are being drained because these dam systems are about to be destroyed. So it can so the 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 malevol the malevolent frequencies can be destroyed. And the only way that you can destroy those is to take them out. You know, they, they had to take down the Georgia Guidestones. So that's a whole other story. But, to, but that's just the first part. They have to take out that branding that's on the earth underneath them. And I don't know if they have. I haven't looked. Uh, same with the Hoover Dam. The Hoover Dam has to go. Because there is branding and spell casting within the structure of it. It has to go. They have to look at what's underneath it. Okay, that's a whole nother story and a whole nother question. My question that I'm gonna ask today is, is, are the <clears throat> dams that are being drained, is, is the purpose behind the draining of these dams, the ultimate destruction of the dam complex itself? That's the first question. Arrow, a deck I like to use whenever I'm dealing with anything elemental. Page of Cups. So, that's a yes, right then and there. A new, we're talking about uh, water technology and we get a cup, <clears throat> a new concept of the use of that etheric, emotional, harmonic energy. That's a yes. Nine of swords. <laughs> End to a thinking pattern. Don't you love that? Look at how her hair turns into ice. Thoughts are frozen in time. Her thoughts are frozen. They do not interact with the ether around them. They are frozen. They are locked. The bottom of the deck was the hermit. So some people see this as divine intervention. Uh, I also see it as a card of respite and going into yourself uh, for introspection, as well as a returning to source and reprocessing. <clears throat> so this is a pretty big yes to me, um, not a screaming ace of swords, yes. This is a yes right off the bat. But what I see is, is the first thing is yes, the water is being drained from the dams because the dams are about to be taken down. The concretization, <laughs> the ether around her is frozen. The concretization of the ether, the, the objectification of the rituals that were performed and imbued in the concrete that built the dam is about to be taken down. So that the wisdom of the natural order of things can resume, okay? <laughs> and uh, the other card, after I took that card out of the bottom of the deck, the, the card that was underneath it was the fool. So uh, that's a yes, guys. That's a yes. Um, there is no climate change. 
the droughts are completely manufactured. And surprisingly to some, the droughts are not necessarily being manufactured simply by those who wish to destroy us, but uh, they are also being leveraged by those who are trying to reprogram the malevolent frequencies. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's look at now um, I, 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 when you cut the deck in half randomly, you're always wondered what you find. And what did we open to? We opened back to that Ten of Swords and we also opened to the Queen of Cups. So that's interesting, you know, because the cards know exactly where they are at all times. Um, I lost my train of thought. Um, there are a variety of dams that I can think of, though I can't name them all. There are dams in Tennessee, part of the Tennessee Valley Authority, which we know is all malevolent, 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 malevolent. Uh, reset uh, bureaucracy. <clears throat> the dams that I know in Northern California um, and the Hoover Dam. Um, are these all sources of primary water? Are the dam structures themselves built on sources of primary water, that deep water from the earth, that water that can heal? everything. Are the dams in, in these places that are being dried uh, systematically? Um, oh, okay. That threw up, flew out and I don't know why. Are they uh, sources of primary water? Three of swords. I can't deny that that flew out. I don't know what we're going to do with it, but here it is. It seems like it came from what, it, what would have been the bottom of the deck, but let's just keep it in the mix anyway. Ah, ha, ha. Okay, so the cards that I drew are these dams that are being dried out, uh, sources of primary water, living water, holy water. Wands. This is a very good card. This is the victory lap. This is when you come back in, you're the knight who has gone out and um, battled as you needed to battle, and you're coming back into the city with your laurels, and the city is celebrating your return. The victory lap. And strength. So a reconnection to the elemental aspect. Um, you know, strength in the Rider Waite is, is a young woman who is holding the head of a lion. Sometimes she's like holding the mouth of the lion. Sometimes she's like holding the lion's head. She usually has an infinity symbol above her. I don't know if there's an infinity symbol in this one. And it's not so much that she's holding a lion, but you see she's, she's completely uh, surrounded by her animal ally, her elemental aspect. I love this deck, the Hush Tarot, uh, for that. Beautiful. Um, these were the two cards I drew. And then what was at the bottom of the deck was the Six of Swords. So moving to safer water. And I love in this card how she is sitting in repose 
in mourning, in repose, and the fish are moving her. The fish are moving her where she needs to be. Um, the fish are a sign of prosperity and um, wealth in Lenormand. Um, and connection to that aspect in the elemental world and the fish are taking her where she needs to go. Whereas in the Rider Waite, you know, there's a, a mother and a child and then there's a man and he's like um, pulling, pulling a rowboat that has swords standing up in it from very unstable water to stable water. And then this is the card that flew out on its own, the three of swords, that card of sacrifice and pain, uh, ending, dissection, very painful and um, so uh, question being, are these dams that are being drained sources of Primary water, holy water, living water, whatever you want to call it. And, um, I think that indeed they are. I think this is showing that they are. Uh, there has been a, a great deal of manipulation of the frequencies of that water, the transmission of that water. Um, that the Six of Swords came up first, or the Six of Wands, excuse me, came up first is saying to me that uh, the, the purity of the water, the integrity of the water is, is being re-released through all of this. Uh, something that Andrew and I were talking about last night after our remote view was as more and more land that had been flooded becomes revealed, then more and more of that primary water actually has access to the ether. Because what's in the ground is allowed to move directly into the air through the ground being dry and revealed. And as the primary water is allowed to access the air more, it gets in the ether, and then it, it does affect everything. No, it doesn't, you know, it, you can bathe in it, which is complete immersion, right? Or you can drink it, but it's also as the water is revealed, it, it, uh, it's taken out of its box, shall we say, and it's allowed to naturally move through the natural ways to be revealed, uh, to, it, you know, to move through the silicate nature of the soil and the rocks into the plasma of ether of the air, it then is absorbed by us and it affects our silicate nature. So the absolute draining of the flooded bottom of the lakes is helping release the primary water. And uh, I, I, that's how I see this card. Um, that yes, um, the draining of the lakes is not only a mechanical necessity to, uh, you know, because if they were to just blow up the dams to take out the dams, how many thousands of people would lose their lives? It would be catastrophic. But if you, if you drain the water over time, then you slowly allow through the, just through the natural filtration system of water through the soil, and especially through the quart and silicate matrix uh, fractal levels, you allow the water to, more and more of that water to be available into the plasma for us. And that's what's going on. That's what's going on. The purity of this water 
is once again making its victory lap. It has returned. It has returned to make its victory lap. A return to the power of infinity. This card is eight in the um, major arcana, but as I said, she usually has the infinity sign above her. This relationship of the interaction of the elemental world and, and our place in the elemental world as part of the elemental world instead of someone who stands on top of it is it's, it's that the goddess is back. The goddess is back. She's back. <laughs> Strong and clear. And she is um, speaking her voice in the actions of Pele in volcanic eruptions and all kinds of things. So a definitive yes. <clears throat> Bottom of the deck was six of swords. We're talking about water. Moving us to safer water. And the wisdom of the fish are moving the ship across the water. How appropriate could that be? We didn't get a cup. We got a sword, so we're talking about thoughts. But the image is water and beings that live in the water. How appropriate is that? Our thinking is being changed, but being moved by the unconscious bounty of these creatures. They are moving us. It, it, it's just so perfect that this card was picked. We're talking about water. We didn't get a cup. We got a sword with a water image. And then this card flew out. I think that <clears throat> um, speaks volumes of what's really uh, at the root of all of this and just all the, uh, all the deception and deceit and destructiveness. And, uh, but it, it is all being dissected. I mean, we're talking about the very systematic takedown of these structures and it's happening all over, right? You know. It's happening all over. The Georgia Guidestones is just one. There are obelisks that are, are crumbling. The uh, Eiffel Tower is rusting. There are structures all over the place that are taken down because they've been hijacked and uh, turned into malicious uh, transmitters. And um, Sova. Sova. Wow, that was surprising. Um, what else can we ask? Let's get the hoodoo and let's get a couple quick cards on uh, our ancestors have to tell us about this uh, watery transition. What do the ancestors have to say about the uh, the takedown of these uh, you know they're they're like geomancy uh, earth branding. It's like these dams are are earth brands, branding of earth. You know, like like uh, geomancy seals, pillars. Um, what are our ancestors? have to share with us about this uh, change in plasma energy at the uh, at the uh, dam complex Temperance. Ace of Swords at the bottom of the deck. King of Pentacles. Very generous. But I think indicating a change in ideas about security, stability, wealth, 
what we think of as money and all the structures around money. He who washes the water, the water of Akash, the water of history, the water of the history of the earth, as well as us and every living creature. A complete reorganization of not only the water, which is the ether of life, but all concept around what makes wealth and stability and just the concreteness of the earth and how we ground ourselves to it. The water is being washed, literally. And we must be patient because they are, these are processes that we are not gonna see, even though we're childish and our egos run us, even the most red-pilled people are some of the worst ones to scream about, I want the moving end, I want it to be over, I want to know what's going on. No, idiots, grow up, you're making it worse. Get out of your high chair and stop throwing a tantrum. You're making it worse. You're making it worse. Shut up. Go in and spend a little time washing your own water. And you will find the patience you need to admit that you are not the king of the universe and you do not need to know this and your eyes of your ideas of sovereignty that are being shoved down your throat are just all part of the carpet bagging manipulation to keep you in 3D. If you need someone else's constructed system to counteract a system you don't like, you're just trading one system for another. And the whole premise of sovereignty as it's being offered as a course that people teach, what, what? Do you think about that? Really, do you think about that? When you buy all these books and you take all these courses and you go to hear these people speak and you pay money to hear these people speak and teach you about sovereignty? Think back for a minute. You're trading one system for another. Two masks, same source. Wash your own damn water yourself. Go into yourself, wash your own damn water, find your own connection, find your own connection to source, your own connection to source. No one else's, no one's class, no one's training, no one's tools, your own. Your own. And from that, build your own new concept of wealth, stability, community, commerce. Wash your own. Quit taking other people's class. buying other people's programs, getting in your car and driving across the country or getting in a plane and flying across the country to be in a class, in a auditorium with all these patriots who were come to hear all this popium crap that's just for the programming. You don't need any of it. <laughs> you don't need any of it. In fact, all you people are making it worse. You're making it worse because this is where the solution is. Wash your own damn water. And you do that with your own discernment, your own. And once you have done that, then you are able to build a new sense of community, wealth, commerce, exchange, and stability. I got two new decks yesterday.
one of them was the Philema Lenormand. And the Norman cards are usually very small. These are big like Oracle cards and they're just gorgeous. So I'm gonna pull one Lenormand card that uh, brings this together for us. And then I'm gonna pull from my other new Oracle cards. I have the Sea Journey Oracle, because we're talking about water. I'm gonna pull one of those too. Let's go. Here we get one Lenormand card that brings everything together to help people take uh, the intuitive message from this, uh, simplify it, put it into a simple form. One card from the Lima Lenormand, please. One card. <laughs> Guys, you can't make this stuff up. <laughs> In Lenormand, the coffin means, is like the death card, the eight and nine. But it also is kind of like the four of swords card in, in tarot. It also represents a time of rest. Uh, There's some elements of the hermit in this card too. Um, right? You need to get in touch. You need to be quiet, shut up, rest, go into your own inner wisdom. Go into your own inner wisdom and commune with it. There is an ending. Yes, there are a lot of endings. There are a lot of endings. But the best way to deal with the endings are for you to go into the respectful place of mourning that come with ending, right? Uh, you know, in, in, in Jewish tradition, you sit Shiva for 30 days after, after the death, say, of a parent. You know, you, you are in reflection with source and, and the soul of that being. And uh, there is a lot of change and the best place for us to be right now through that change is in deep inner reflection. So don't be scared because you see this. Things are ending, they have to. Put yourself in your coffin of rest. Put yourself in that four of swords uh, platform of quiet reflection. Okay. And then I'm gonna draw one card from the sea oracle since we're talking about water these are very simple and i'm not familiar with these cards at all i have no relationship with these cards i'm very familiar with lenormand imagery but uh these cards are new so let's just see what comes of this so one card to add uh, a, uh, a a a message from the a message from the water for us that we can Take with us moving forward. A message from the water, please. May you dive deep into your passion. Okay. Ultimately, this is a place of love. It's a place of self-love. As as this, the ultimate place of self-love. It's not the coffin that buries you in the ground. It's, it's, it's your cave of solitude and reflection. Love yourself enough to lay in the dark water of yourself where you will find the answers you need. Your passions are your unconsciousness that are activated by that fiery wand energy. Go in to that deep, quiet water, that deep, dark water. Go into that deep, dark water and love yourself enough to find what comes of it and process it yourself based on your own relationship with what you call God, source, whatever. Take time. Relax and trust that your unconsciousness, though scary, is a loving, rejuvenating, nurturing place. Thanks, guys.
I gotta go get a new phone. I'll talk to you soon.